Yo, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today we got something a little bit different. We are joined by our good friend DP. He's the co-founder over at Soul Savvy. We've had him on the channel at least a few times at this point. At least it feels like it. Go ahead and introduce yourself one more time just in case we have some new viewers. I'll let you actually start with the first topic as well. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. Thanks. It's uh, It's been just over two years since we talked about how to buy shoes for retail. I am the co-founder of Soul Savvy. Um, we've been really focused on on evolving the business so it gives people value in different points of the sneaker experience, right? We started as a community. Now we offer an app called Drops, which lets you tell us what shoes you're looking for. And we instantly give you notifications on where to buy those shoes for retail, obviously. And then from there, we also have an app called Collect. It is a marketplace, buy, sell, trade, no resale prices, and you can also showcase your sneakers. For people who are not Soul Savvy members, there's a 3% fee, the lowest in the industry. For people who are Soul Savvy members and pay a subscription for our premium membership, there's 0% fees in the marketplace. So you can freely buy, sell, and trade shoes without paying us a dime through the marketplace. Obviously, you pay your subscription, but ultimately, we want to make a place for sneaker heads and even casual sneaker consumers to come into the Soul Savvy ecosystem and find some value in what we're doing versus before we were very hyper focused on the fanatic we've now went from you know exclusive to more inclusive which really leads me to my my first um, discussion point the state of sneakers i feel like post last dance during the pandemic it was wild every single thing that dropped sold out things that shouldn't even sell out and resell were were selling out and, and it didn't make any sense and it really made it frustrating for people which is what led to our first video because like i remember us talking being how are we at this point where such a simple sneaker is 300 dollars resale like this is just dumb right and that frustration was everything Everywhere. No, it's been frustrating for me just as a base level consumer, but on the flip side also this is kind of what we do for a living. So if we're unable to at least at the bare minimum access or have access to these products, like we can't even review them. So it's been interesting to say the least. We've been having to pay a pretty penny on top of, you know what I mean? So like we're paying a premium for what I consider to be, at least for the price, it's, it's hard to gauge just, but for the price that I'm paying for a lot of these shoes, just to simply review them and do my job we're paying way too much for what i consider a, a garbage gr even though they're not garbage in the sense of quality and things like that it's just that it is a gr so as a long time sneaker purchaser or consumer like i've been doing this since i was in in high school things are so or had gotten so wacky that it kind of just was serving a false narrative where there was like all these new people and it was creating false demands which i think we're seeing right now with a lot of these shoes sitting on shelves where a lot of people seem to have almost as we predicted which was they're going to get so fed up with the process of trying to buy a sneaker now that they're going to end up just leaving because they were never here in the first place. So those people that don't already have that passion instilled in them, whether they didn't watch MJ in real time, like as it happened or Penny or Shaq or whomever, they have no connection to these products. So once they're done listening to some idiot like me talk about how much I love the shoe, they're like, well, that's nice. I can't get it. Yeah, exactly. They couldn't get it. So yeah, so they went from that to just, downright leaving. I do think that some longtime consumers and collectors probably have done the same, but I do think that those people will eventually come back. But it's just absurd to jump through hoops. Like when we talk about just sneakers in general, like the actual app, the fact that you have to win the opportunity to give this company money is just ridiculous. Like just the notion, it just doesn't sound right. Well, and it's why we always say at Soul Savvy, like sneakers is your last option within the release window because like there's so many better ways to buy shoes. Um, but yeah, to like to your point you guys are putting out these videos and talking about the quality of the shoe should you buy it should you not and the reality is like they're just inaccessible and that's why i'm excited about where we're at now the industry's cooled off resales cooled off great we're in a recession we're probably heading there but it's ultimately to me just a normal life of sneakers sneaker culture sneaker industry those jordan 5 green beans do not need to resell they should be 30 percent off at some point unless you want them on release day because you just want to wear them we were in a really unhealthy and unnatural spot and that just caused like the wrong people to buy shoes to be interested in shoes and it caused the right people to leave and my whole thing has been like if we alienate the people that got the culture here what's going to be left the people who only think they're cool if they wear travis scott's and off whites if that's the reality we're going towards there's no sneaker industry in 10 years those shoes are only cool because it's hard to obtain them once that becomes a non-issue definition of cool cannot be how much you paid on StockX or goat 
for a shoot. That's not the definition of cool. That's how people operated for like two years during the pandemic. It, it's how they think now. So like I was having a conversation with somebody over Christmas who I had just met that that night and I was wearing what, what we at the channel called the grown man Jordan 3s. It's those desert elephants. I meet this person. Another family member at the party was just like, he's a famous YouTuber or whatever. And the, the person I was talking to was like, oh, what? Like, what do you, you know, do on YouTube? I told him we review shoes. And they were just like instantly like, oh, my sister's a sneakerhead. How much are your shoes worth? That was literally the next thing that came out of her mouth. And I was just kind of like, well, that doesn't matter. Like I'm wearing a regular shoe here. Like th these are not special. Yes, I, I think very underrated, especially like when we're talking about garbage GR, that wasn't one of them. Like that was a great sneaker material wise, build wise, all that stuff. So that person wouldn't get off the price thing. Like I had to literally get on GOAT and like show them being like, look, you can get these for under retail. Like it's not a big deal. So it's really weird that people on the outside, they have this now perspective of what we are as sneaker heads and consumers. And honestly, it makes us look like idiots, at least to me, because because we're valuing something that has no real value. Like it's false value. You know what I mean? It's not like gold or whatever, where there's actual like real value behind that stuff. So it's just really interesting. Yeah. And that's the biggest shift that's happened is we went from everything sold out and flipped for some value to it's 30% off, 40% off, 50% off. And that's totally okay. It's still a good sneaker. But the issue at the end of all that is two things going on right now that, that are kind of problematic for people, which is one, they don't know where to look to your point. Like they're just like, it's goat and stock X. You Google a shoe. Those are the top two search search results all the time. Even if it's sold out or not retail or less, like people are paying a premium for Air Max 97 silver bullets when they're like sitting everywhere. They just don't know where to look. And like, that's been one of the biggest things we, we changed around Soul Savvy over the last two years was like building that technology. So, you know, before it was a little, let's say sneaker nerdy. Now we built a technology around, around drop alerts where it's like put in Air Max 97 silver bullet or De Desert Elephant. When that shoe restocks, it's going to hit your phone. And that's just so much simpler than having to track it down all over the internet. Um, and ultimately give your money to a secondary marketplace. Like those De Desert Elephants you mentioned, those were 20% off at Nike, but I think it's still going for retail because people don't know where to look. And, and that's what I'm really happy we simplified. That process of just like finding a sneaker on the internet right now has never been easier, regardless of if it's on sale or not, right? You still need to track it down for a good price. Well, I would even add to that, make sure that you go into your stores. Even these these larger chains, I think it was in, and I don't remember what video it was, but it was in one of our videos and I had mentioned how I ended up copying like three pairs of Fire Red 3s, um, which I've never done before. I've never bought more than two pairs of the same shoe. The only reason why I was able to do that is because like every once in a while, like I don't even go to the mall that often, like it's maybe once every few months and I just walked in and they were uh, they were just sitting there and I was like oh do you have my size and they were like yeah and I did that twice <laughs> and, and it was on two different occasions so I ended up just buying them and you know I think that that's fantastic retail or less doesn't even matter like and to your point we were seeing this the last time that Jordan Brand did a big price hike to kind of combat or I wouldn't even combat but like or say combat but it's more to get some of that money that they're losing from the third party resellers so their pricing is now more reflective upon that market which is unfortunate fortunate for real customers, but you can't really blame them for that when people are already spending like double retail on a GR. It's like, well, why wouldn't you raise your prices then? It's just really weird that there's so many, I guess that there's so many new consumers that they are lost in this world maybe maybe that's the best way to explain it and uh, perhaps that's what a community like soul savvy is is probably best at um, maybe even wear testers as well which is trying to kind of teach you the way around this you know what i mean without breaking the bank yeah no that's that's exactly i mean look the vision for for soul savvy has always been just just to help people right and whether stuff's reselling or not we can bring value at a discount or just having to track that shoe down and like what you're seeing with stores is restocks is just late shipments right we've been saying to people what it's been a month and a half since cherry levens dropped it's been a month since the Jordan 2 Chicago was released. Like those shoes are restocking every single day. If you don't have that access to, to the notifications and the tools giving you that, you just think they're gone and they're not. I had to stop buying Jordan 2 Chicago's because I'm like, I can't keep buying anymore. Like I have enough to sell back to people for retail. But on the flip side, there's always someone trying to make 20 bucks. They're always going to find a way to make 20 bucks, right? You just got to empower yourself to find that stuff on your own as well. And again, that's why that's why we exist. That's why we created Soul Savvy. No, definitely. I, I think that same philosophy goes into like what we do with performance as well. A lot of people put emphasis behind the price, like equaling performance. And that's never the case. A shoe can retail for 200 and go on sale and you find it at Ross for 30. It's the same shoe, the same performance. Doesn't matter what you spent on it. 
it's like maximizing your dollar out of the product that you're buying and, and knowing what it's worth to you as the consumer, whether you're using an on-court, off-court, whatever. So I think that's one of the most important things is for consumers to be more consumer savvy, really educate themselves on what's going on, not just with stock numbers and things like that. I think that the whole stock market for shoes thing was the first downfall of like what this was, because that then again, put that false value on a product that really doesn't need to be there. We've seen this trend happen in multiple different categories, whether it's with Pogs, Beanie Babies, basketball cards, Pokemon cards, all that stuff. They always have their peak, they drop, they have another peak eventually, then they drop. It's just one of those things where it's like when an influx of new consumers comes in, it messes up kind of everything. It's like uh, entering an atmosphere that they don't belong in, and then it kind of ruins the ecosystem a little bit until it like starts to settle. And all those new people, and even some of us, we got trained to think like, you know, you got to buy everything. Everything's going to be gone. Everything. We got to buy stuff to trade stuff. Like, again, it's like, it's such a much more normalized sneaker industry that like, we're going to be seeing deals. And I think one of the things from a soul savvy perspective that, you know, as we've been been building this with, with our members and just as sneaker heads looking at what we can do, I think everyone knows we charge $33 a month for a subscription for access to everything we do, $240 a year. We lowered the price 40%. I'm very happy with our yearly price, but that's not for everyone. And I think where we've seen one of the biggest challenges in the sneaker industry is that secondary marketplace. And that's where we just felt like we had to insert ourselves in a way that was true, true to us, which is like, you can go to the marketplace, you literally can't resell a shoe. If the shoe was 200 bucks, you can only sell for 240 because taxes, shipping, we gotta give people some wiggle room to get their money back. But you can't sell it for 250, 241, 300. If you wanna go resell a shoe, go resell it somewhere else because we just don't need that anymore because we we went too far away from people and culture and, and the love of shoes and, and we're trying to bring that back with our marketplace and ultimately just, just simplify anything because there's so many good sneakers out there and if your options are to support the big green monster, which I, I'm not going to name by name here, or a company that's like genuinely trying to do something positive and productive for the space and the true end consumer, I mean, that's an easy decision for me and that's why you know we created Collect and I'm excited to build that with people. Speaking of the whole downturn and uh, the membership with Soul Savvy, have you guys taken like, a hit almost with the way that things are going, especially since at least originally, I know that it's a community, but originally it was like, hey, we're going to help you cop kicks for retail. It kind of morphed in into its own community. Um, its own environment, if you will, which I think is awesome. But when you start to see these products now on shelves, like like I said, I just I actually just caught my second pair of twos also, just because like they again they were there, it was cool. I was like, wow, this is awesome. To me, it feels more normal than anything else. But for people that are used to what things are or were within the past like two and a half years, have you guys seen any type of uh, downturn within Soul Savvy yourselves? And with that, how do you navigate through that, or what do you expect to add to Soul? savvy outside of collect maybe i don't know if you could share but new things that might be like a great way to still join the community and, and get what everybody needs we haven't really because like at the end of the day we didn't build the business or the brand on the backbone of like hey just because this is reselling we exist we built it because people love shoes and we wanted to bring those people together and since day one like i'm not a i can't build an app i can't build a marketplace i can't code i can't do that stuff it was about finding people who who believe in that idea of like just wear your sneakers it's, it's that simple they're meant to be worn or collected if you don't want to wear them but they shouldn't just be constantly flipped so to your point about like bringing value that's what we've been doing the last two years our drops app literally i now with a 20 month old boy who likes to run up and down the house like a maniac I actually don't tune in to 10 a.m. Eastern releases. I just don't have the time. I'd rather spend time with my son. I still buy all the shoes that I want because we've made a $12 subscription and app that just simplifies that, right? And like from a collect perspective, it wasn't just about making another marketplace. It was about making a marketplace that you can buy on, you can sell on, you can trade on, and you can showcase your collection. Like you can come on there, don't sell anything. Who cares? But show people what you got. Show people what's in your collection. And again, I should note very low fees, 3%. We're not coming in here trying to say, give us 10% like everyone else. It's like, hey, we we got to operate a business. We got to do logistics. We got to handle these things. All we're asking for is 3%. We're not doing a subscription from that perspective. So I feel like as a business, we've really adapted and prepared for this moment. And I'm excited to leverage my network, leverage the stores we know to give people more value, which is like, you know what? Those Vomero fives that just dropped that are fire. Let's just sell those to members right away for 30% off instead of waiting three months for it to go on sale. So I feel like start to finish community, how I'm going to buy for retail and what happens from a secondary marketplace perspective, buying and selling and trading. There's something there for 
everyone and you can find value if you're a sneaker fanatic i know i'm a crazy sneaker i got 600 pairs of shoes i'm scared to ask you yours holy cow i used to i have converted into a still a hoarder but trying to go minimal and so yeah so i have like maybe like four pairs of shoes that i really rotate through which is why i end up with a couple of doubles or triples because that's the shoe that i wear most often so it's like my fire reds are pretty already but um to your point though like basically everything that you explained again coming from somebody like me where i've been in the sneakers since i was like 13 14 all of that sounds like the new way of just community kind of like what the old forums used to be uh, back in the day like there was iss and soul collector forums and things like that where people would literally like have meetups and hang out they would have sneaker battles there would be like prizes like this we're talking about like what i consider like peak sneaker head where it was just fun to share stories that were not just of the athletes, but of your own as well, being like, yo, I was wearing these when this happened and all this stuff. And it's like one of those wild things. And on top of that, uh, you guys also have connections with uh, retailers and boutiques where you're able to gather these like product production numbers, like how many are gonna be out there and when are they gonna be able to go on sale and stuff like that, which I think is like really cool. Uh, something that you actually cannot get nowadays um, unless somebody's in your community and then leaking that info. I'm really proud of this personally like i feel we as a business have earned that trust from consumers and brands which is like look i'm always trying to buy shoes for retail to sell them back for retail and everyone i know and who knows me knows that so when i say like hey you got any lingering jordan 2 chicago's from your raffles or block canceled orders and they go yeah i'm like great I i'd love to buy that for the community right and and, and we're always doing that because people trust me not to open a consignment shop next month and try to you know get rich but um yeah, it's just about staying true to the space because like we dealt with a lot of BS and effery over the last couple of years. And um, to your question of like, how do we navigate this? This is what the company was built for, man. I couldn't be any happier that everyone who is faking it to be here and contributing to the problem is, is leaving because there's no incentive for them to be there. Now we just get to build with people, real people like you, real customers who wear their shoes, real show owners who care about where their shoes go versus like having to deal with the noise. And that's just a beautiful thing in my opinion. I completely agree. It's one of the things where I always like tie this into like fandom of other cultures but like a star trek fan you were really isolated to an era of time when that property or ip didn't evolve and bring in new consumers or viewers or whatever of the ip of the product eventually that ip will die with its fan base and that's something where we can't have that with sneakers if sneakers is going to continue you know what i mean and be big so having all of this influx of newcomers sounds awful but on the flip side when the bad ones do weed themselves out you are left with people that genuinely showed up here maybe because of the last dance or maybe they joined soul savvy maybe they watch a wear testers video who knows now they're like yo i i didn't even realize that i loved footwear like this or on this level and so we do have a new passionate person that can then move the culture forward which i think is just perfect yeah and this is a new era like when you think about we got air max 97 silver bullets that just came back we got the air max one red with the big bubble we just went through like the five six year era uh six year era obviously chicago's just came back white cements are coming back i think 18 to 20 is its own sneaker era. I think 23 to TBD is another one that I just think is gonna be a lot healthier. And um, you remember when True Blue 3s didn't sell out and you could just like find them at anywhere and now you check marketplaces well, and it's like, what, what, even, what happened? Even to your point with the Air Maxes and things like, like those silver bullets, I just got my first pair. This most recent release is the first time I've ever owned that shoe. Again, I've been into this since I was 13 years old and it's my first time owning that sneaker. And I got to share that uh, with our audience and they got to see me kind of like hyped up like the whole thing like hypebeast think that like hypebeast are bad right but like everybody's a hypebeast about something sometime in some way it's okay and exactly it is okay as long as you understand why you're hyped for me that shoe i was like bro i've been seeing these since 97 i've wanted a pair forever and so to be able to finally have that and then get to share the experience with other people i thought was really fun and again that's part of the whole community aspect of things whether you're part of like the wear testers like youtube community or you're part of the soul savvy community uh, or just your group of friends like you always have that kind of like I always say this word wrong but camaraderie I don't know if that's the right way to pronounce it but that's one of those things where it's like that's almost priceless and I think that it's awesome so this hopefully will be my first pair of those Air Max ones the OG with the red and it'll be done right which I think is awesome I think that's something that's underrated in the current state of sneakers is I wouldn't say the backlash from fans but the constant complaining that we do like in video or in forums or online on Instagram and, and in comment sections where it's about time the brands are like actually listening and they're going back and they're reworking these shoes to look more
or OG look more like what we used to get back in the day, almost relive the old experience again. And, and again, we get to share that with newcomers. I just think it's so fun. And storytelling, that's one thing that we didn't get for a couple of years because like every brand, every retailer was like, I'm going to do anything. I can just throw this on the internet and it'll, it'll disappear and it's not my problem. I sold through. It's like, no, you got to take care of us. You got to throw that event. You got to give us that free shipping. You got to treat us as consumers, right? And explain to us why we should buy this shoe versus just expecting us to gobble it up because that's where the space is at. And again, that's just a much healthier place to be. And it comes with its challenges, but like, I'd rather have good challenges than stupid challenges personally. Right. It's different like putting in some legwork than literally having to jump through hoops. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, look, we've all lined up. We've all done the things we got to get to get shoes, but like it went to an extreme and um, we're normal. It's beautiful. I think the, the hardest part was that people were cheating. I know that bots are like normalized at this point, which sounds awful, but like it really is. Like for me personally, when we're talking about the sneakers app, I'm not even bothering with that place. Like I already know it's an instant L. So I do not deal with that garbage. But uh, again, just kind of walking around, you'll find stuff, you'll run into stuff. Yeah, no, 100%. And like to your point about bots, uh, I think bots and resellers have like the best PR in the world where it's like, I cannot name the amount of times I've asked people very well connected in releases. And I'm like, I send this tweet and screenshot. I was like, is this true? They're like, no absolutely not this did not happen we would never let this slide but people are on the internet saying like hey look i got 100 pairs it's like no you you didn't you you faked a screenshot of your gmail to make yourself feel good about it on twitter but i guess that's what cloud does cloud is uh is a hell of a drug as they say uh false information was running rampant over the past couple of years and and it holds no boundaries it's in every facet of life and stuff like that every genre if you will uh speaking of the instant l that we all like to get over on sneakers is there anything that as an industry insider of like you know you expertise on copying shoes is there anything that both new and old customers should be looking out for maybe staying away from sneakers in general uh, i think last time we talked you said shoe palace was a good site i know a lot of people like argued with that in the comment section so any new information that you have that you might be able to share with us yeah i mean look a lot obviously has changed and a lot is always changing that's the beauty of, of soul savvy it's our job to be on top of up top of those things um i think one that people are learning the hard way right now way too many people are entering raffles when they shouldn't be especially raffles that pre-charge so if you're interested in a shoe, I would 100% avoid a raffle that's going to charge you right out the gate because stores are kind of using it as bait to get people to buy things that aren't going to sell out. And I think a great example recently is that Air Max Ugly Duckling pack. Everyone was super excited about them, but like to us and as we communicated, like it was very clearly a, an inline shoe that was going to go on sale and it's on sale right now, right? So stores are doing that. So just be careful of raffles. From the sneakers perspective, look, entering on sneakers, it's just about the mindset you go into it, which is like expect the L and do it last, right? And we've always said that like if the drop is at 10, 10 a.m. Eastern, you have a couple minutes to enter. You should be focusing on any website with bot protection with good stock versus going to sneakers where like everyone is going there and you have no insight into like, will you get a W or not or the rationale behind it? Whereas like other stores, you, you actually control your own fate. Shoe Palace is still a good one. Thankfully, they lowered their shipping. They were charging $26.95 at one point. Now we're seeing free ship or $10 ship or $16 ship, depending on the shoe. They're always a good one because they drop thousands of pairs online, right? They're a big chain retailer, Jimmy Jazz, DTLR. Kith was really great a couple years ago and has kind of went downhill. It's almost impossible to buy on Kith now. I still think Undefeated is a great one if you're up at 8 a.m. Eastern, which is really tough for the West Coast crowd. But there's a lot of good stores getting good inventory, releasing it online. You just got to know where to look and, and you got to be equipped to do that. And again, focused on a store with bot protection from Shopify because the narrative that like bots are eating up the Ama Manier Jordan drop or any of these like super hype co collaborations is just, just not true. There's like teams of people dedicated to making this a W for normal people like us and, and they're succeeding. You just got to know what you're doing ultimately. Do you know off the top of your head which shops operate off of you know, having bot protection? Everyone so far that I've mentioned, obviously, Ama Manier, Union, Social Status, APB, all kind of one in-house. Oh, there's a lot of retailers that do. Has Foot Locker adopted this yet? No, no. So sorry, that has not changed at Jeez. all in the two years. Man. Again, to, to all my friends at Foot Locker, uh, your site sucks. I'm sorry. You all know it. We got to fix that. It's just ancient. Foot Locker's a mess. Shout out, though, to the Finish Line team, JD Sports team. I know they're, they're putting in work with their uh, early access and what they're doing as a team. I've actually had pretty good success there. But again, it's look, man, we, we've seen it. It's kind of it's obvious the stores that care. It's obvious the ones that don't. And, and me personally, like I speak with my money, like I don't shop. I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus, but I shop at specific places over other places because I know they'll they'll take care of me as a consumer holistically, right? Not just me personally. But yeah, there's a long list of stores with Shopify bar protection that with my new dad brain, because that's one thing that's changed. Um, I don't yes. remember everything as well. Tell me about it. <laughs> Are you seeing any type of, I guess, slowdown in terms of the Jordan retro? Because that's really what like I'm all about is like that 
that 90s basketball stuff, mainly Jordans, obviously pennies and things like that. But like, I know when The Last Dance aired, did something fierce that I don't think any of us ever expected. But um, do you think that maybe that's settled down a little bit? And like now, I, I feel like now we're able to like go in and like, we just went into our local shop and there was, man, I want to say at least a dozen retro Jordans. And I'm not talking about like mids and lows. I'm talking about like the actual retros, like seven, sixes, 11s, fives. It was amazing to see. Uh, yeah, so are you seeing anything slow down on that side? And uh, if so, I think it's great. But if not, any alternatives? I mean, it, it all has that. The Last Dance was like the perfect storm of something to get us really excited about retro Jordans, coupled with uh, a complete disaster of a supply chain. Everyone wanted all these things, but also like they just wasn't getting to North America. And like, I think we've seen, shout out to Shanghai Seoul, we've seen the, the photos of racks in China where sold out reselling in North America, stuck over there on a wall because no one wants it. I think that's over with. Now it's like, you're seeing those same things here in North America. And it makes me so happy to see Fire Red 3s and Taxi 1s like very easy to get or at retail because ultimately like those are really, really good shoes. Like very, very good shoes that I think in five years, people are going to look back on and be like, damn, I should have bought those for 200 bucks. Oh, shit. 450 now like we've seen that all the time with shoes which again like is one of the problems right now with sneakers i have to harp on it i think a lot of what's wrong in the secondary marketplace is like by the time you pay that 15 percent fee to sell something you're like barely getting your money back resale prices are inflated short from sevens by the time you sell it right now on a secondary marketplace you're probably losing a little bit of money you're basically padding someone else's pockets right that's why i'm happy with and, and super proud of what we're doing with collect is just like we just gotta empower people to to win um not um, corporations to win and obviously like again we have a bottom line but it's aligned with with everyone's interest and, and and i'm happy about that but yeah man jordans are accessible there's no complaints there that actually makes me very excited though for the white cement threes i'm curious to know how that drop is going to go i've heard that there's going to be greater numbers like what we saw with the fire reds i don't know if you know if that's true or not but i think that that's one that to me the fire red was like my favorite retro last year and i thought that that was like beautiful to see so many it's even my son had just asked for a pair and he's lived with me his whole life and everything he knows about sneakers he's never really cared until like right now and he straight up asked me like hey dad can i get the fire red threes or the white cement threes and i swear my heart grew two sizes i was just like are you being for real like you know what i mean so i just i think that it's amazing and and i like walking him into a shoe store because uh, he's starting to play basketball and stuff and he's excited and again that's like a budding new consumer for the right reasons he's not seeing it in sense of like oh i'm gonna hold this and it's gonna be worth something it's like no like i'm gonna go lace these up I'm going to go out front and I'm going to start shooting hoops. And I just think it's great. Yeah. And and, and to your question around um, the threes, I think everyone has to remember the brands know exactly what they're doing. If they are making a shoe hyper limited, they're doing that so you don't get it. And you have to be okay with that reality. So obviously they know they can sell a lot of white cement threes. Are they going to make enough that it's retail? No. They're going to make enough from their projections that it has some value in the market to give it that allure. And that's just the reality of, of sneakers. Like at some point with all of us, when we get the things we want all the time, it's not as fun, right? The chase is there and the brands know that. They know how to manipulate that very well. And um, that's been my biggest learning um, over the last four years is just be okay with the fact that you didn't get it and there's going to be something else every single week. So much good product. It's never been better. Uh, so what are some brands that you think, uh, at least in your opinion, or maybe even something that you see a lot in the community over at Soul Savvy, who's doing big things right now that might be under the radar? Honestly, it's fair to say almost everyone because people's, I think one thing that the kind of two year rush of like not being able to get Nikes or Jordans has done is like it made people look elsewhere. New Balance, Asics, Hoka, Solomon. I just imported a pair of Asics from Italy because I was like, I can't find these anywhere, but it was, it was 160 bucks. I was like, these are dope, right? I, I wasn't looking that way three years ago four years ago right and it's, it's forced us all to diversify and that's just a great place to be because you know you talk about buying hype or sold out stuff so you can feel unique but the reality is like everyone's gonna wear the same shit buy something actually unique to your style. And there's never been a better time. There's so much good product out there right now. Across the board, everyone's doing something interesting. Uh, Mizuno, like I'm stoked. I'm, I'm my, my collection personally is growing more from like the Adidas Asics side of things because I have a lot of Nikes and I have a lot of Jordans and they're doing cool and interesting shit. But that's fun. That's 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 the beauty of all. It doesn't just have to be an Air Jordan anymore. That's where I'm getting into a little bit of trouble with my trying to be a minimalist sneakerhead because you got Asics busting out 80s retro basketball. You got New Balance doing the same thing. I'm like, ah, oh, crap. Like I said, that's like my era. That's like my style. I love all of that stuff. I, I love seeing it back even like avia or avia i don't know how to pronounce it but like they're coming back like it's just really really cool to see not just runners or sock shoes or the yeezy style thing you know what i mean like it's it's unique like we got a 
a ton of people wearing Crocs around here. Like I'm talking about like kids and stuff, like like teenagers, and it's it's wild. You know what I mean? So I just love seeing the diversity. Obviously, we see a lot of people, especially in our area in Sacramento, we see a lot of people wearing Jordans, but we see a lot of people wearing other stuff too. So I just think that it's really awesome. We are about to wrap everything up here. Is there any last words or final thoughts that you wanted to throw out to anybody? Uh, maybe pitch one more time, like what Soul Savvy's doing. I think you said it was the Collect app, or I, I keep getting multiple notifications because I have them all on my phone right now, but some of them are from Drops, some of them are from Collect. Those are two separate things, right? Yeah, absolutely. To give everyone the, the high level overview of Soul Savvy, we used to just be, uh, just be. We're an amazing sneaker community of, of thousands of people who love shoes and we're talking about sneakers all the time, helping people buy shoes and just enjoying the culture a, as a group. But that goes to, to Drops. It's our point of sale app. Basically, you tell us what you're looking for, what you want to buy, and we'll send you that notification instantly. You don't wait for someone on Twitter to type in a link and paste it. We're not worried about affiliate links. This is strictly about ensuring you get the shoes you want for retail. And then finally, at the end of that kind of experience is again, a marketplace. The only one in the world where you can buy, sell, trade, and then on top of that, showcase your sneakers, even if you don't want to do those first three things. There's a little bit of something for everyone. We've diversified our, our pricing tiers. It goes from 33 a month to literally $0. Come check us out and, and download the apps. The brand and the company has really evolved since we did this last, which is why I was so excited to come back. And um, you know, if you were a member before, come check us out again. Download the apps, see what's good. If you've never heard of us, uh, this is obviously a great time to jump in and, and see what Soul Savvy is about because ultimately our focus is, is making sneakers better. And that starts with um, you know finding the right people who, who believe in what we believe in, which is like, again, wear your shoes, don't flip them. Exactly, have fun with the whole culture and everything. There's lots of stuff to learn, lots of eras to deep dive into. Hopefully uh, people over at Soul Savvy can help people like us over at Wear Testers with all of that stuff, which we, we already do behind the scenes. So I think that it's a, a really great thing. Thank you so much for being here, uh, both you know as a guest and all of the viewers and everything. If you guys have any comments, make sure that you leave them down below in the comment section. We will have links in the description box in case anybody's interested in checking Soul Savvy out or the Drop app and all of that stuff. They got a bunch of cool stuff coming. With all of that being said, thank you guys for everything. We greatly appreciate it and we will catch you guys on the next one. Hopefully you're out there getting some wins because again, if you're just getting out there a little bit, get off sneakers, look at other shops. Uh, maybe you have your notifications turned on, you'll, you'll get a couple of good dubs. So thank you again for everything. We'll catch you on the next one. So until then, have a good one.